I want to talk this morning on the subject, He's with me. He's with me. And you write it down and when you put He is with, put your name. Yeah, all right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <coughs> put your name. He is with Michael. <coughs> put your name. He is with you. Moses had a concern as he was talking with God about the challenges that lie ahead in his journey with God's people. Moses was saying, well, God, if we are your people, then reassure me that you will be with me as I lead your people. You've got to understand something, church, that Moses is in a trying place. Moses have gotten God's people who were in Egypt, and Egypt represented toil, oppression, and misery. Toil, oppression, and misery. This is what God's people had left behind. They were headed to Canaan. Canaan represented freedom, rest, abundance, and most of all happiness. This is what they were trying to get to. And Moses was the one that was trying to get them there. And Moses understood clearly that this was not an easy task and even though God had chosen him, Moses was at a place where he wanted some reassurance. And I don't know about you, but every now and then you want to be reassured that God is with you. And sometimes you will even ask God, as, as Moses did, Lord, I just want to be reminded that, that if I'm going to do this thing, then that you're going to be with me. And, and God says to Moses in verse 14, he says, my presence shall go with thee, and I'll give you rest. Church, as, as, as we sit here today and, 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 and think about what, what God means to each one of us, it ought to give us some comfort to know that when God promised to be with us, that, 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 that we will be able to, 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 to go all the way, not half of the way. Well, you've got to understand that as these children of God left Egypt, God manifested himself along the way. God manifested himself along the way by preserving them as, as, they, as they travel through these foreign countries and foreign land and foreign places. He, he, he manifests himself by protecting them and providing for them in miraculous ways. He was reassuring them, I got you. But sometimes even the miracles of life are not enough. Sometimes our doubts and fears will get the best of us. And we need a reminder every day of our life that God is with us. Some tangible way, it might be a song, it might be the written word, it might be an old saying passed down from generation to generation. But something comes along to remind us that God is with us. The church, here is the amazing thing why Moses was up talking with God. The people had turned to a dollar. Mm -hmm. Down in the back. <coughs> the very people that you're leading from toil, oppression, and misery have turned their back on the God who showed them protection, who provided for them who kept preserving them as they journeyed, as they traveled. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of all was working it out. The God that stood by them by a pillar of fire by night. That God who says, I'm not going to lead you here. I will provide along the way. But yet, while Moses is up on the mountain getting commanded,
commandments and conversing with God and fellowshipping with God, they're down in the valley turning to golden images. What happens to us, church, when God promises to be with us and we turn away from him? <coughs> what causes us to turn away? Yes, we have struggles. Yes, we have heartaches. Yes, we have pain. But is that reason alone to turn away from God, who promises to be with Mike, to be with Linda, to be with Jordan, to be with JJ, to be with whomever. Yes, God says, I'm going to provide. I will manifest myself along the way in your life. I will bring miracles in the midst of your trials and your tribulations. All I want you to do is to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the word of the Lord. That's all I want of you. That's all I require of you. It's to hold on to my unchanging hand. But here we find the people that cause disappointment and disillusion to come to the heart of Moses' heart. Moses' heart was broken when he got back down and saw the camp bowing down to an idol. Church, we need to be reminded today that God is with us. Why, Pastor? So we don't turn to idol gods. So that we don't slip into darkness. So that we don't give way to the fears of life. That we trust that God is with us. What does it mean that when God says, I'll be with you? What it means, church, is that he's going to be with us walking side by side. With us every step of the way. That's what it means when God says, I'll go with you. God does not abandon us in the middle of the trip. Have you ever, have you ever started out with somebody and they promise you they're going to do this thing with you and you get halfway in and then all of a sudden things start to, to fall apart and, and things don't go as you plan and it don't look as bright as you thought it was going to look? And they somehow or another start coming up with all these excuses. Well, I'm not going to make it today. Amen. Amen. I was, I was getting myself all jacked up Friday evening for my workout Saturday morning with my workout partner. I was getting all excited. I was going over in my head how all the, the, the reps we were going to do and the weights we were going to use and, and how I was just going to push and, and just push and, and just push. I was going to push him and I wanted him to push me and I was just all excited and, and I sent him a text saying, you know, I'm looking forward to in the morning we're going to hit it hard and then when I get up, I find out he ain't going to be. You said you're tired when you ain't tired. Amen. Amen. But here, church, God says to us, I'll be there at whatever time you say we're going to get it. Yeah, yeah. What are you talking about, Pastor? What I'm talking about is that God offers to us companionship. God says to us, I'm in it all the way. God offers to us the fellowship and the companionship. He says to Joshua in chapter 1, verse 5, I, I was with Moses, so I shall be with thee. He wanted Joshua to understand. Joshua, you're not going to undertake this task by yourself. What you saw in Moses and how I was present in Moses' life, I'm going to be present in your life. What are you trying to get at, Pastor? But I want you to understand that if God was with Joshua, if God was with Jeremiah, if God was with Paul, if God was with anybody, he'll be with us. God says to us, I am going to be with you. I'm not going to let you go into this thing by yourself because I know it will overwhelm you. Life will overwhelm you. See, Satan likes messing with life. Let me say that again. Satan 
likes messing with life. Yeah. Yeah. Satan will mess with your stuff. Yeah. He'll mess with your family. Yeah. He'll mess with your job. Because why, why, why is that? Because you see, a lot of times, Satan understands where our allegiance is. Sometimes, church, I hate to tell you, we place our job, our family, our children over God. And Satan said, well, all I need to do is start messing with that. And that'll get them on track. That'll get them sidetracked. They'll start, then, then they'll start to doubt whether or not God is with them. Church, God promises us that he will give us a fellowship black man up. And I know some of you got some tight buddies in here. Amen. Mm -hmm. You got some road dogs and some girlfriends that have been through some stuff with you. Amen. Mm -hmm. But those same road dogs and girlfriends, they have abandoned you from time to time. Didn't answer a phone call. Didn't return a text. Didn't show up when you need them. You had to cry by yourself. You had to walk alone. You had to shoulder up your own cross all by yourself. They weren't there in that midnight hour. But guess who was there? Yeah. Guess who stood by in the midst of it all? Guess who showed up at the right time, at the right moment, in the right way? Guess who was the one who undergirded you in the midst of your pain, your tears, your struggle, your agony, your indecision? Guess who showed up in the midst of that? It was God. It was God. It's amazing that Moses found the people in such disarray. But yet he had just been promised and reminded by God, I'm with you. <coughs> what a blessed reassurance in this church that we can find ourselves reassured by God and then walk into a mess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. How many times, church, have you left church on a high note? Left church shot. Left church filled with God's goodness and his glory. Only to get a phone call or to walk home into some mess. Yeah. Amen. Amen, church. Amen. You've been there, done that, right? Amen. Church, he told Moses, he says, Moses, he said, not only am I going to be with you, he says, but I'm going to give you some rest. Yeah, yeah, yeah church, you got to understand, he was trying to tell the boy something. Moses, you got to understand something. Life is going to keep coming at you, but I'm going to give you some rest. Church, you got to understand that when you walk with God, even in the midst of your battle, you can't fight 24-7. Right. Right. I don't care how good you are. I don't care how long you've been walking with the Lord. You can't fight 24-7. That comes a time in your life when you need some rest. Right. But here's what he says to us. He says, I'm going to give you some rest. But what is he going to give me rest from? What is he going to give me rest? Is he going to make folk leave me alone? Not necessarily. He may let them still aggravate that you know what out of him. Uh -huh. Your circumstances might not change overnight. A lot of times we want an overnight miracle. God, when I wake up the next morning, I want this done with me. Yeah, we go to bed with that prayer on our lips. We wake up the next morning, open one eye, and trouble still sitting there looking back at us. But God promises us rest. What does he promise us rest from? He promises us rest from our doubt that he's with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He says to us, don't doubt me. Don't doubt me. Just because the troubles are there, don't doubt me. Just because the fears are there, don't doubt me. Just because the anxiety is there, don't doubt me. Just because the dangers are there, don't doubt me. Just because the affliction is there, don't doubt me. What I'm going to do, I'm going to give you some rest from this stuff. I'm going to show you how to rest in the midst of your fears, your doubts, your anxieties, your dangers, your afflictions. I'm going to show you how to get a good night's rest, even in the midst of that. You see, when you turn it over to God, that's when you rest. When you turn it over to God, that's when you rest. When you say, Lord, I need to rest, I need some sleep. When you, you know, that thing just keep nagging at you, gnawing on you, you say, Lord, it's in your hands. 
And I don't know, see, if you've got the kind of faith that when you say God is in your hands, that it's really in his hand, and you ain't got to hold on to it. You see, that's how, that's how, that's how, that's how the Delta showed up in Nat's life. Because you see, he was about to drive me crazy. See, he was about to make me have a heart attack because of the stress of the situation. But when I said, God, she's in your hands. Little did I know that when, when I gave it to him, he gave it to the death. That boy needs some rest. That daddy needs some rest. He can't take this no more. Delta, y'all take care of this child for him for just a little while because he can't handle it now. He about to lose his ever loving mind. He got a breaking boy. He gonna end up drinking himself stupid. <laughs> <laughs> now what did y'all just do with that? <laughs> See, a lot of times instead of resting, <coughs> we rest in substance. Yeah. Do you hear me, church? Yeah. What I'm trying to tell you is don't turn to your stuff when you're trying to get some rest from the struggles of life. Don't turn to your, to your addictions. Don't turn to the substance that will only numb your brain, your brain and your mind. You need to turn to the one who says, I'm a I'm the one who will take that mind and shut it down. I'm the one that can get you to a place to where you just say and sing a song or, or a hymn. You just start humming something. That's rest, church. You know what I'm talking about. When you get anxious about something and all of a sudden you find yourself just humming the truth. That's resting in the Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The other, the other night at work, our song came on. And, and, and one of the people within the workout group said, that's my song right there. What he was saying was, that's the song that helped me in my moments of anxiety. That's the song that helped me in my moments of doubt. That's what gets me through. That's what lets me wake up the next morning and say, good morning, Lord. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing that empowers me to keep on keeping on. When we know that God is with us and we walk back into a mess, Whatever that mess is, whatever it is, and however how you describe it, we have to know that God is right there. Yeah. See, a lot of times we will say the mess represents God's absence. Uh -uh. God don't leave just because there's a mess. We leave God because there's a mess. God doesn't change. God is not man. He can't lie. When he says, I'm with you, he means I'm with you. And when, when, when you feel that he's gone somewhere, he's not the one who's moved. You have. You're the one that's moved. You've moved away from God. When you don't take time out to be with God, it ain't God who left. Yes, he reminds us. And I'll be there and I'll be a companion. He said, Paul, do not be afraid. He says, I will not let anything happen to you. He said, I will not allow any harm or attack to come to you. When I read that in Acts 18, verses 9 and 10, I thought about all the times that Paul did get in trouble. That the tax did come. But guess what? Paul says at the end of the journey, I fought a good fight. I kept the faith. You, you, you got to understand something, church. Paul was able to do that because he knew that God was with him. You see, when, when, when he talks about when he talks about fighting a good fight and keeping and keeping the faith and finishing, what he was saying is that all this stuff that come on me didn't make him quit. Yeah. Didn't make him give up his religion. Yeah. 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 Didn't make him give up what he believed about who God was. He said all of these shipwrecks, all of these imprisonments, all of these beatings, they didn't have any effect upon me. 
Church, what have the struggles of life done to your faith? Has it made your faith stronger or has it caused you to move away from God? You see, church, if it don't kill you, He says, he says, Mike, he says, what you need to do, you need to see the gnat that you want to see. Okay. Yeah. I said, what, 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 what? He said, no. He says, you need to see the gnat you want to see. I said, you got to talk to me, boy. I'm in a bad place right now. He says, you got to see the gnat that's finished the course. You got to see the gnat sitting in a place of, of authority. He says, you got to get that in your head because right now you just see the rebellious gnat. And that's all that you can see. He said, you need to see that God having placed that where he's going to take her to. Instead of the place that she is. Church, that's all. But not impossible. So I start, I start, I start seeing her as successful. And every time I see her as successful, she pulls one of her stunts on me. <laughs> see, that's how Satan, when Satan knows what you're working with, Satan starts to attack. But every time he will attack, I still see her where she ought to be. And church, I can tell you right now, she ain't far from where I saw her. She's going to be. Because God has taken her from over here and placed her right here, right now. You see, I didn't think she'd walk across the stage, but God always said, you are lying. Oh, and the truth ain't in you, boy. I'm going to take you a baby girl and I'm going to put her where I know she's going to be. See, God has shown me that if you trust me and not what you see. Yeah, that's right, that's right, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sunday morning and you burden down. You don't give God the glory. 
What are you getting at, Pastor? What I'm getting at is you got to stop coming into church and focusing on your stuff. Amen. you got to start coming in church and focusing on God. And when you start focusing on God, your stuff will take a pass. And your praise, your praise, your praise will come out. Your praise will come up. When you start focusing on God, knowing that He's with you, if God did be for you,